Hi, everybody. It's Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you're all safe and well. Today's guest, um, you'd have probably seen him uh, in front of the camera, but also behind the camera. He, he does a lot of work for the um, Hammers Chat YouTube channel, as well as appearing on various other sort of um, fan sites as well. It's Charlie Walsh. Hi, Charlie. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm everywhere and nowhere. You know, <laughs> if, you, if you watch the video and I'm not in it, it's probably, I'm probably around somewhere yeah. being an idiot. But yeah, Just thank you for the- having me on. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. It's really nice to have you and I appreciate you taking time. Obviously, we're, you know, you know the concept. We're interviewing Hammers all over the world, all different ages, about their memories and also their their Hammers 11. So, and it's nice because obviously we're cataloging all this stuff on YouTube for prosperity. And while we haven't got anything to produce new memories for at the moment, um, it's it's nice to look back and, and chat about the old times, so to speak. So, in, in terms of you, Charlie, you know, um, what would be your sort of, your, your earliest sort of memory of West Ham? So I didn't go very often when I was a kid because we just didn't have any money, basically. So going to West Ham, and because I was in East London, was just like this pipe dream, basically. And because we also didn't have Sky, all of my earliest memories are all from watching it on Match of the Day, basically, or going to the pub when the game was occasionally on when I was very young and didn't really understand what was going on. Um, And in my first match was, um, I can't remember the exact date, it was the 2002-03 pre-season against Leighton Orient away where we got beat 3-1 and <laughs> it was like it was all rosy I just remember I remember vividly me and my dad were sat we were sat in the home section we were like yeah. right up at the back of the stand it was like it wasn't full by any stretch of imagination and Defoe scored the first goal and I remember going oh my god it's amazing he scored and there was like a celebration and after it that just went it's not going to stay like this and lo and behold TT Kamara's on the pitch he's not hitting the net with any he's not even getting hit in the goal it's just all over the shop yeah we're losing 3-1 it was a grand old time um but yeah those are my earliest memories was that and it was that season I should have thought about it then because that was Glenn Roder and I should have thought you know it's probably not going to go too well yeah um but thankfully when we went down to championship kids for a quid came in and I started going more and more often but yeah loads of my early memories are just seeing us on on match today on the tv and seeing like uh, Travis Sinclair, Paolo Di Canio in those shirts. Those are just the things I don't. I don't even remember yeah. the match specifics. I just remember Shirts. seeing them and thinking it was like the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to remember. I used to love those uh, those preseason things mm. at the O's. It was every every other season. I think we played them, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. So uh, no, yeah. I used to, and actually I used to do. Um, they used to do a thing where, and they still do. Where obviously the West Ham play at home and Orient play away, yeah. and they did. Um, they used to do Orient season tickets under 16s for about a tenner. So we used to go to the West Ham and then Orient just because you yeah. know we were we were under 16. We had nothing better to do than, than jump on the train and go to Brisbane Road. But uh, mm. yeah, how <laughs> funny. Um, so that's that's obviously your earliest one. Um, what would you say, sort of, you know, your fondest memories of West Ham? And maybe even sort of, you know, obviously working working for the channels and stuff, you know, mm. might be slightly different than, than other people's. Yeah, it's crazy because, like, specifically with Hammers Chat, it's like, I've got so many, I've had so many weird opportunities and weird, like, things that I never thought would have happened previously. Like, I did the Iron Men premiere and got to, like, interview several footballers and Ray Winston, um, which was weird. He really wanted a drink. Um <laughs> Not, not putting him on blast. Uh, yeah, it's, I've got done that. I've got to go to the training ground and met players. I went to a, a shoe launch and, into, and got to meet Mikel Antonio. I filmed an interview, but you know, I was there. I'm counting it. I interviewed him. Um, I've just got to do all of these, these weird, random things that I never thought I would have before. But my favourite one, and it is legit my favourite West Ham memory, is uh, it was the last season at Upton Park. And uh, Gio was in contact with someone who worked at the club. Um, who I don't know if I can name, so I won't. But um, they said, "Hey, come, come and have a look around the stadium beforehand." You know, because it was it was like I want to say I think it was Stoke. I'm not a thousand percent certain because we had planned to film on the pitch. We were going to do a pitch side review after he'd also he'd Geo being the person had then emailed someone else yeah. at a club who was very high up who said who basically got us access to film the review for the match pitch sure. side. And so we were there. I had all my stuff, but we were there early. And and the guy who worked at the club was like, hey, "Do you want to come and have a look around?" We're like, "Yeah, cool. That'd be that'd be great." So we walk in, and a, and a, and again, just to stress, I have a backpack on with microphones, cameras, tripods, all manner of wires, like a lot of wires. Now, if you think this, and if you, if you think this is a big beard, right? It's an isolation beard. You see nothing. Okay, my beard was longer than I had long hair. It was just that 
I looked concerning, let's say, to security folk. So we walk up to the main doors and uh, the person just flashes the badge and goes, oh, and they're with me. And, we're, and he's just walking, he's got pace at this point, he's off. And we're like, oh God, okay. So we sort of start sort of harrying behind them. And then we're in, we're in the front doors of Upton Park. And all of a sudden I'm seeing this, because I never went on a stadium tour or anything like that. Yeah. So all of a sudden I'm seeing like the inside of where I've been going yeah. for like most of my life. I'm like, oh my Jesus, what's going on? We walk in, we go in through the first set of doors and there's a security pass. Uh, it was the bit where, you know, they had like identical floors, one on top of each other, where they had like all the yeah. boxes and rooms and yeah. stuff. And we walk into the first set of doors and, and he, tried, he does the same thing. Oh, they're with me. Wait, hang on. Do they have security passes and we have to stop? And he comes back and goes, oh, no, they're with me. I've got this pass. And, and she's like, no, they can't come in for you. I haven't got a security pass. He's like, okay, no, no worries. We'll go get one. We'll go get one. We walk out the set of doors, go up a set of stairs, yeah. <laughs> straight into the next floor, which was completely identical. Set up, like, the security people were different, but there was the exact same amount of security yeah. people, everything. He walks and goes, they're with me. And they're like, okay. And we're like, oh, my God, we're in. And again, I have this huge rucksack. Yeah. I could be anyone legitimately anyone no pass i look dodgy as all hell it was a bad time for all involved but <laughs> walk in me and you again looking at each other oh, God, we're in here we walk in through i've never seen any of these bits we're seeing like random parts of the stadium bare brick walls where yeah. it's not even decorated because no one goes, one goes there yeah. and it's just so confusing to me we come up uh we see like the dj booth i, I think i met you yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah not, definitely yeah, yeah yeah i think i met you which is weird when i watched this channel and i was like i recognize you why do i recognize you that's why um yeah, and then it's, we see everything, it's like, great, and he goes, so the, the employee of the club said, oh, so what are you doing now? It's about half an hour to kick off, you go to get a drink, and we were like, no, we've got to go get press passes, because this was the day we were filming. It's like, he goes, no, we've got to go get press passes from the, uh, from the press room. And he goes, oh, okay, I'll take you there. Again, going through all these corridors, down staircases, no one's seen, bare brick walls, and he opens this door to the press room, and I look in, and there's all these people and he goes, right. And we walk, he walk me, Gio walk through, assuming he's being polite and just opening the door for us. Yeah. And then we turn around and he goes, cool. So I'm not allowed in here. So thanks guys. That was really fun. See you later. Shuts the door. <laughs> right. And so me and you are looking at this door. And what I didn't realize is that it was like the back entrance, the yes. like emergency exit to the yeah, press yeah, room. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And so we're looking at the wall and then we, we go, and we turn around and the entire world's press is there just staring at us who are these two random guys who've come out of a door out of nowhere one of them's got a gigantic rucksack on him with wires hanging out big bid and i was like oh my god i'm seeing ray parlor sat there i can see flipping cash for not cash for rifle. um what was his name the goalkeeper who played for uh leicester and chelsea um back up Oh, I can see his name. He's played for everyone. It doesn't matter. The point is, I'm seeing all these bloody people, famous footballers, pressed people. I've seen every outlet, massive cameras. I'm like, oh my god! I look to my left. Gio's already started walking because obviously he's actually thought about it. He's a quick thinker, whereas I was just yeah. in panic mode. He's gone. To, he's made. He's seen the guy he needs to get the press pass on, and he's made a beeline for him. I'm like, oh my god! So again, I'm trying to catch up to him, hurrying along. I see a security guard coming from this direction, just straight towards us, going, um, excuse me, guys. Like in the sort of tone which says, You're not meant to be I'm here. trying to sound approachable, but in yeah. reality, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, here? yeah, yeah. Geo can't hit because Geo's partially deaf in, in what an ear, so he can't he can't hear him, so he's just off. Like I can hear the guy. I'm like, um, I just, I'm going this um and guys like where who, where have you come from? And I'm like, uh, uh, I'm going to see this guy, and I literally just ran off. Yeah. Like completely ran, could not have looked more suspicious if I tried. And then we figured out a press pass and got it all sorted. Um, and then that day ended up being a very exciting 0 0 draw with Stoke. Um, yeah. But we did get to go pitch side and film the dugout for the review, which was the first thing we ever really got to do, which was big and special for Hammers Chat. Yeah. But that whole thing was just. Uh, it, yeah. was like a, it was like a Benny Hill film. It really was. It's like a, it was like a labyrinth around there. Um, <laughs> it was it, yeah. was. it was. It was a labyrinth. And yeah. I mean, I think I was, I can't remember how many seasons I was there, but yeah, but a lot. And yeah, you, you got to know the way, but still you'd go around another corner. Oh. Oh, this door goes to here. Oh, okay, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, no, it was a, it was a bizarre, it was a bizarre place. Bless it. You know, obviously, mm. you know, there's not a lot of people get to do that and go around as all the back, back doubles, as you said. Um, the other, yeah, London Stadium's not just, just the same, just the same. To be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant! I, I love it. One, one of the other things we got to do was uh, they, the women's team, when they were West Ham ladies before the club took them over, and they had that last game at Upton Park. Yeah. Um, 
they hired like or, or, or asked Hamas Chat to be like the media for the women's team for it. So we got to sort of go to the stadium, but that meant I legitimately had a pass yes. that let me anywhere in the stadium. Yeah. And so the first half I was sat in the dugout watching the match with the women's team. And I was watching it, it was great. And then the second half, I was like, oh, I'm going to go watch it from somewhere else in the stadium. And I thought, I just, I've never been to the press box. Let's just go to the press box. Yeah. But because I had this pass, I was legitimately allowed to go wherever I want. And so I spent the first five to 10 minutes of that second half wandering about just the stadium, yeah. getting lost still- and confused. <laughs> yeah, no idea where anything went. Going up, there'd be one security person because it was the women's match. So there wasn't many security there. So yeah. that one security person who was just like, oh, you're all right, can I help you? Completely different atmosphere. Not yeah. a Premier League game now, they're yeah. just nice. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to get to the press box. And they're like, I'm not sure, but if you go that way and maybe turn right, I think it's up there. So I'm just wandering about aimlessly. And uh, that place was, a, like you say, a labyrinth is the best way to yeah. describe it. Because yeah, it was crazy. confusing as all heck. It was, it was. Well, God bless her. Right, mm. okay. Lovely, 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 lovely. And a, ni- a different, a, a nice memory, which again which is really nice because it's not necessary about a game. Do you know what I mean? It's about a memory mm, about yeah. West Ham, which I think is so much better sometimes. Um, right. Okay. Let's, let's go on and talk about your, um, your hammers 11. So, you know, we try and keep it to four, four, two, um, as mm. my video editing skills aren't very good as I'm learning it as I'm going <laughs> along, um, more than anything. <laughs> um, secondly, um, it's your 11. So you can be whoever you want as long as they obviously played for West Ham. Uh, and the main re- one is um, you have to be alive to a scene and play, obviously. So you and me won't be able to put Bobby Moore, but we can put Gary Breen, you know, that type of person. Um, right. Okay. So what are we going to do, Charlie? What are we going to do with your 11? Who's so, uh, so I've not got, so I'm, I'm, I've not gone for like the best. What I've gone Brilliant. for is my favourite. They're my Love boys. So boys. I'm warning you now, some of these are not good players. Okay, you're going to look here. Is this team stru- is is four four two? You'll be pleased to hear. Thank the you. editor inside you will be happy to know it is four four two. Um, is it functional? Kind of like they they would play a football match. Are they winning one? I don't know. I don't know. But they're my boys. They're people I love unconditionally for okay. reasons. And what I what I realised when I loaded into this call is I made a mild mistake in I've picked people who I love unconditionally, but in ways I don't know how to explain. So that's going to be fun. Love it. to try and. All right. Love so it. in goal, easy enough to begin with is actually Robert Green. Robert Green is the th- my three favourite goalkeepers that I've I've seen play were Robert Green, uh, Adrian, and Fabianski. Just because Fabianski is so good, and I do think Fabianski is the best goalkeeper out of them. I think he's the best goalkeeper mm. we've had that I've seen play. But Robert Green was so good. <laughs> like I'm, I, I'm thinking specifically, for example, the first game of the Emirates against Arsenal, where he had these games where he was completely and utterly unbeatable, mm, on it, and yeah. I don't understand where they came from, but they just were. And it reminds me, his whole thing reminds me a bit of what Declan Rice is going through a bit now, because I always felt that Robert Green was criminally underrated by every other team's mm. fan. Like they just didn't understand how good he was, and I think part of that was because of his roles for England, his games for England, yeah. again, notably the, the USA game where Dempsey scored from however far away. Yeah. And people saw that and think, oh, he's not very good. He's crap. We should get this young kid, Joe Hart, and this other stuff. But watching Robert Green week in, week out, you saw actually how dependable he was. The guy was like, he was like a safe. You just knew it was going to keep it locked yeah. up, you know? He was so, so good. And, and, and although I do think Fabianski is better, Robert Green just has this place in my heart. And it's probably because I'm a bit of an England fanboy as well. But I just love him. I just love him. Yeah. He's, he's, he's brilliant. Yeah, and he's brilliant. And, he, and he's brilliant on the um, on that Pete, Pete Crouch podcast at the moment. He's mm. doing a lot of... He's, he's, he's very funny when they, they put him on. Obviously, he has Kasper Schmeichel and various others as well. But mm. obviously, he is uh, living off the fact of his, uh, his Chelsea uh, successes mm. as well. I yeah. love it. Absolutely brilliant. Right, but Greedo in goal. Left back then, Charlie, for the boys. Uh, it's Raz Van Rat. Okay, now shout. Raza Van Rat. Now, is he a good? Was he? Was he? Here's the thing. When he came in, I had very high hopes for him because he played. He was playing for Shakhtar regularly. He captained his country. He was good. He yeah. was a good. I don't know where that picture was came from. He was a good left back. Okay, he really, he genuinely was, and he was trash for us. I will say that admittedly and openly now. Okay, he was trash for us, and if you'd asked me in. November of that year, would I put him? Would I call him one of my boys? No. But then that picture of him in the onesie came out, <laughs> and that picture of him in the onesie for the catalog was so good. He just looked nice. He looked like he was having a nice time. I remember there was another one from the shoot where it's him and Adrian. Adrian's got his arm around him, and he's just like, 
Oh. It was it, he was just a good lad. I have to find that, yeah. <laughs> and then and then we released him in January. It was like, all right, he's gone now. But like the onesie, man, I, I just can't. I never I haven't stopped thinking about it since. Every year, the catalogue gets delivered to my house. The little one you're flicking through all the Christmas thing, and none of them are anywhere near as good as that rap pitch. It was so good. Razvat, he's in there because I just love him unconditionally for it. And ever since then, I've sort of kept a vague eye out on what, what's going on in his life. Scroll through the Wikipedia page every now and then. Yeah. It's just, that was, that was the highlight of his career. I don't, yeah. Captain in his country, Champions League, not interested. That picture. Razvan's Rats won. <laughs> the West Ham catalogue, Christmas yeah, catalogue. Yeah, yeah. Model, brilliant. Oh, I love it. Okay, we'll put, put Rat on the, on the left. He's going to go on the right wing, uh, right back rather. So this is the first person who I developed this kind of stupid love for. But this is a much better player. It's Thomas Repka. Now, Thomas Repka is significantly better for West Ham than Razzlehan Rat. But I just love his insanity. His attitude was just... He was just baffling. He was on record signing at the time. Yeah. And the guy gets sent off in the first game. And it's like, he's here now. We've got it sorted. We've got it locked. <laughs> and he was, he, oh, I remember, I think it was a game in the championship. He went to take a free kick on the halfway line and just started doing kick-ups for no reason. I'm just like, there's something about his mindset. I don't know what it is. I know he got voted like in the like Footballer of the Year awards in uh, the Czech Republic, I think. Uh, he got voted in 2009. He got voted like Personality of the Year. And I'm like, he's never, he was never, ever going to win Footballer of the Year. He's not like this world-class run out of the thing. He's not even probably the best right-back we've had since then. He's not even the best centre-back we've had since then. But he's just a complete loose cannon. Yeah. And I do love a loose cannon. I can't yeah. lie about it. There is something I love just a little bit about a loose cannon. I do like a little niggly challenge every now and then. Yeah. Just, just an occasion, not big ones, just no. little ones. Double yellow card will do me good. I'm happy yeah. with that. And yeah, he yeah. was, he was good for those. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, and he was. I, I, I totally agree. You know, West Ham fans love that loose cannon, that unpredictability mm. about a player. You know, mm. there is. You know, you have to have a mix. You have to have some six out of ten players. You know, but that one who. And then one day he'll just be like, like a world class <laughs> defender against like yep. you know Omri in his pocket and that's it and then that's then he'll just <laughs> totally get sent off. Brilliant, mm-hmm. love it. Okay, we'll put Rep- Repco on the right. Who's going to go in the centre backs then, Charlie? So these are slightly more obvious why you love okay. players. Uh, it's James Tompkins and James Collins, the double James, the double J. They're in double there. J. Um, <sighs> Tompkins, I, I think it was the right time to sell him. I think it was the right mm. time to sell him. I think it was the right money to sell him. It was money we couldn't really turn down. Um, the 10 mil for a centre-back, especially in that day in the Premier League, was a lot. Like we had, It was like, it makes sense. But he came through the academy and was one of these... He he was the second player I saw come through the academy and go all the way. Yeah. To be more noble. And it just... It, there is always... It, it's a cliche, but there is always that little bit of pride inside you when you see an academy boy on the pitch, especially for that long. And he he was he was really dependable, really sturdy. Yeah. Again, I'm not even going to say he's the best centre-back we've had during that time. We've had plenty of great centre-backs, I think. But he... There's something that's just a little bit nice about seeing an academy boy on yeah, the pitch in that sense of looking like he's just there to do it. And also the centre-back role is quite natural where people are coming towards you and they have to like get their shorts and go, right, we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. And again, it's that like you're looking at him going, come on, let's have it. Yeah. Um, and then James Collins, for much the same reason, despite not being an academy person, I don't think he could be much more West Ham if he tried really. Um, he When he left the first time, I was really genuinely disappointed. I always really, really liked him. Um, and I think actually he came back, I think he was almost better when he came back. Yeah. Even though I think he... Not that he had much pace to begin with. He might have lost a little bit of pace and done all this tough stuff. But he, and towards the end of his run, even towards the end of his run where he wasn't great at times, he didn't have the consistency. You know, A, he was always going to try his hardest and was never going to stop. And B, when he did have worldly games, he was genuinely unbeatable. Yeah. Like the guy was this big colossus of a defender. Um, and again, even if he wasn't an academy person or came from even, even England, he was about as West Ham as you could get. And coming back and you could see genuine genuine love for the club is something that doesn't happen that much in modern football. Um, and so to have someone uh, like like Ginge doing that was just it was it was awesome. It was awesome. And to exactly. see him 
see him retire and also to go off and then subsequently retire. And it's just, it's kind of, it's bittersweet because he's just such a boy. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the, the, he was clearly a, he was clearly adored by the players as well. Obviously, Mark went out and, and you know, publicly said, you know, on the pitch, I think he'd give this man another year of contract, didn't he? When we did the yeah. end of season sort of lap of appreciation. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. And he said, cut, cut of, uh, with, with Tompkins. And I think even when, even when you see him play for like, uh, like people who have left who are academy players and you see them go to another club, you still have that sense of he's yeah. one of ours. Yeah. So even even with Rio, you know, or, and, and Frank, you know, he's one of ours actually. He started with us, yeah. you know, we're the ones who who got who helped him make that career. But I love yeah. it, love it, love it, love it. Okie doke, good start, good start, Charlie. I'm loving this team. Right, who are we going to go for for left wing? So my so my two wide players, you could probably make arguments for them either side. Sure. To be honest, because I'm I'm fudging it a little bit. So we'll go left. We'll just say. We'll go, we'll go Diamante, let's say. The guy was a baller. Oh, my giddy gosh. I have a little soft spot in my heart for people who are decent at set pieces, right? Yeah. And that, he was beyond decent. He had, he could, he just, oh, I love, I love, a, I love an attacking midfielder who's got a bit of dribbling, a bit of passing, a bit of everything, right? And he could do everything. He was really good. He wasn't very fast, but... Yeah. He could still pass a man if he needed to. He could whip in a cross like nobody's business. He's banging top, he's banging three kicks in. Pens, he's got them on lock corners, whipping them in. You say, talk about Robert Snodgrass, bro. That guy was like, oh. it just, oh. and it, it, when we, I, I was, I don't know, I still don't know why he left. Yeah. Um, at the time, I remember being like, wait, how, what? He's one of our better players in a, in a, in a sort of rough season. And mm. I think that era, like, I love Zola. I really did love Zola. I love the way he tried to play football. And, and I, I think, I understand why he had to leave. <laughs> I get it because we almost got relegated. But there was something about the way that team played football. Yeah. There was a bit of swagger to it, a bit of style to it, and he was one of the key cogs in that. Like he had it all. He had that swagger and style, even just the way he looked. Yeah. Um, and I know I've I've seen him in interviews after say he regrets leaving West Ham, and I just he was one of the players I really was so sad about seeing leave. Yeah. I just thought he had it all and I thought if we had him for another season we could and in a season where we weren't struggling as much, we could see even more. I think he even scored like seven goals that season. Which yeah, for a yeah, midfielder yeah, yeah. in a he was, he was in a, a relegation s- season is mad. Wasn't he Hammers runner up or I think he was Hammer the year like He was he was he was loved. And it's like he came in, he killed it. He went off, <laughs> and you just and you just think you always think. Oh, I wish we had him for at least one more season, something like that. Yeah, because he was just such a baller. He was such a baller, and a complete nut job as well. I, I've told you, I love a, I love a little. Yeah, listen, just a little bit of unhinged, not a lot. Yeah, just a li- little bit, a little bit. When the screw is always... just. A little yeah. bit unloose. He was yeah. always, you knew, you know, if if a if a defender had stuck a foot in a little bit too long, um, yeah. he would yeah. kick it. He would kick back. But yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I love it, love it. Okay, we're gonna have any other wing then, Charlie? Yossi Benayoun. Yossi Benayoun is was was is probably my second favorite footballer to have ever played for West Ham. Sure. Um, my first favorite's coming up. Get hyped. Um, he again, he's similar. He had he just had everything. He was so silky. Um, and I remember him coming in, and I knew nothing about the Israeli league, like whatsoever. I still don't. I can no. I, I can name you a couple of teams: Maccabi, Haifa, yeah. yeah. you know, Maccabi Tel Aviv. I can name these people, but I can't. I don't know anything about them. And it seemed so random, which is a very West Ham signing, just to be like, yeah, we've just signed some guy from the Israeli league. What what of it? Um, but he was so good. He was unbelievably good. Like, and again, it's similar thing to Diamante where he had a bit of everything. He could pass, he could shoot, he could he cross, he could dribble. Um, that goal against Bolton, for example, just shows him working at a slightly higher level than everyone else. Um, and I remember when, so my dad moved to New York for a while, uh, around the time Yossi Benet was playing for us. Um, and he, he, he was living in Brooklyn. In a in a like a converted warehouse thing, yeah, yeah. and he'd moved in with um, a Scottish guy and two Israeli guys, and the two Israeli guys uh, supported West Ham purely because of Yossi Ben Ayin. Yeah. And I went over there to see him uh, one summer holidays from school, and I stayed there the summer holidays with him. And like 
the Israeli guys would not stop talking about Yossi Ben every every waking moment. The two things they spoke about were Yossi Ben Ayun and Mario Kart for some reason. I don't know why <laughs> they were really into Mario Kart. They were, um, but they went on and on. And I just remember when when I was leaving, um, when me and my mum were getting back into the car to go off to the airport to fly back home. I remember them when they, everyone was saying goodbye. They just kept saying to me, "Remember Yossi. Remember Yossi." They just kept telling me, "Remember Yossi." They were get Yossi on the back of your shirt. Fifteen Yossi, Yossi. Um, and so that maybe that's me paying slight homage to them in a sense, but he was an, he was a gem of a player and someone who was an, a legit joy to watch. Exactly, exactly. And it's funny. I, I'm I, I've, I've I've been to lots of places. I remember I was in Finland in Helsinki, and everyone always, you know when they found out I was a West Ham fan. Oh, how uh, do Tin, Tin Heinen? He played for us. You didn't he? Mm, yeah, he did mm. for about half a season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all they knew. It's just like one player. That was it. Love yeah. it, love it. Okay, we'll put Yoshi on, on the right wing. Who are we going to have in the centres then? Uh, so, first of all, you've got Mark Noble. Yep. He's Mark Bloody Noble. He's a legend. He will go down as a legend. Um, even when he's not having the best game, you know he's going to have at least be trying 110%. Mm. Uh, again, he has that little niggly side of him as well. Yeah. Occasionally, he will, he will two foot a guy. Cool, fine with it. Um, but he just... He oozes West Ham in every way, shape, or form. He's underrated by everyone else. Yeah. Um, no one quite appreciates him apart from West Ham fans. And he just, he's just Mark Noble, isn't he? Yeah. He's just Mark Bloody Noble. He's just too lovable. He's in these interviews on the club's YouTube channel. You're like, he's a, he's a nice guy. I remember the Iron Man film. There's that scene where he's looking for his keys at the beginning. Yes. And he's just going, love, have you seen my keys? Have you seen my keys? And there's like a, a montage for like two minutes. And just going, my keys. You see my keys. You're just like he's just Mark. No, he's just, just a normal a, bloke. Yeah, he's just a great lad. He's just a good bloke. Yeah. You know, if there's one, if there's one person you, uh, out of all the West Ham's time where you go, should you invite him to dinner? It'd be Mark Noble. He just, just even just to cook him a spag bowl, just to say cheers. He's just a I, good lad. It'd be a steak and chips, man. I think to be honest, I could see yeah, a, a steak and chips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just went for my signature dish. But yeah, I do. I would I, listen. I would try to cook steak and chips for the boy. I would. I would. Yeah. And the second one is my favourite player uh, to have ever played for West Ham, and that's Joe Cole. Um, Joe Cole, again, he's like the others where I'm talking about. Oh, he, has, he has a bit of everything, but he was... When I was young, and obviously when I was a kid, you want to play for West Ham. Mm. He's the person I looked at and thought, oh, I could be Joe Cole. I could yeah. be Joe Cole. I'm from a similar area. I grew up in North London. I could be Joe Cole. I could be Joe... Oh, I can, I can dribble. I, can't. I can dribble. I could be Joe Cole. Like, yeah, yeah. it's, you know... It, he was the aspiration. He was the hero player. No, I agree. And yeah. even once he did leave, which I was obviously completely, as a kid, just distraught about, I couldn't handle it. Um, I still always loved him and supported him wherever he's gone. And every time I've seen him do well, be it for England, be it for Chelsea, Liverpool, Lille, whoever it is, like I'm always super happy. He, he, he really was my first West Ham love. Um, and he always remained, he's one of my favourite players to have ever played football because of it. Um, and I remember one of the days we were at the Olympic Stadium, he was in the sort of, we, were, we went to the corporate box, we were invited to the corporate box by one of our sponsors. Can't remember which one, not my job to remember, that's Gio's job. <laughs> but we were there and he was there and I saw him and I was, I was so desperate to go up to him, but the social anxiety in me was like, yeah. Charlie, you're going to sit here and you're not going to say hello because there's that never meet your heroes thing I was desperate to. And uh, Gio went up to him and said hello and I was like kicking myself for not doing it. I was like, it. Um, but yeah, he's just genuine just love Cole, for that one. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just Joe Cole, isn't he? He's like, yeah, he's just. And I think you've got uh, what I quite like about that sort of that that sort of team so far is you've got some what I call you know West Ham boys in there, you know, who know what it means, yeah. as you said, would be give hundred mm. percent, even if they're not, you know, and you know, you've we've probably mentioned it before about that sort of yeah, particularly Nobs. Yeah, now he's. He's yeah, fifty percent the better player than he was two years ago uh, at least, and it's just you know he's he's brilliant, he's brilliant, mm. and obviously Joe, as you said, Joe was. I think you're yeah, I, I agree. I think you know there's always a player that you aspire to be when you're all playing football at school or on a yeah, you know, yeah. and Joe Cole, yeah, for me it was you know Peter Butler. Um, <laughs> I tried to be as, as significant as Peter Butler um, or Kevin Keane. Um, that was those who I wanted to be, but I never was. Mm. I was more like Neil Ruddock, to be honest, given my, <laughs> sure. my physique. Um, yeah. But yes, uh, that, and toward my latter end of my playing career, I did I did style my my game more on Neil Ruddock. Um, right, okay, lovely, <laughs> lovely midfield. Right, okay, who are we gonna have your your strikers then? 
Charlie? Uh, so the first one is another guy who's about as West Ham as it can get without being West Ham, and that's Carlton Cole. Um, Carlton could have and probably should have left when he had the opportunity to, uh, when Liverpool were interested, 10 mil was getting mentioned. Mm. It was those Zola years where he was genuinely really, really good. Um, one of the things we do on Hamish Chat is me and Gio do stat stuff with our series insights. Um, and one of the things I was surprised to learn when we, when, when we looked into it and Gio told me, I was like, oh, that makes sense now. There's only, um, I think it's four players have scored uh, 10 goals or more in two seasons in the Premier League for West Ham, like consecutively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, I think, Tony Cotty, Freddie Canute, Mark Arnautovic, Carlton Bloody Cole. What a boy. And not only did he do it twice, he did it three times in a row. Then we got relegated. Then he took a pay cut to stay with us so he could help us get back up. And he did it in the championship as well. Yeah. Like, he, A, he was genuinely good. Like, it's easy to make fun of Carlton Cole because he, he's just, well, because he's Carlton Cole. He, yeah. he even runs a bit weird. Like, the way he moves is just odd on a pitch. He's got a bit of the Peter Crouch vibe. But he was genuinely good. Like, there was that, again, under Zola, some of those goals were. Oh, wait, hello, hello, Carlton Cole's arrived. The team were ticky-tackle all over the shop. There's that one where, was it against Spurs? The one where it sort of bounces, he controls it and spins around and hits it with his yeah, left foot. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just stuff like it. He's just, he had the ability and he also had the drive. And, and, and I've, I've got so much respect for someone who takes a pay cut to stay with the team mm. when they go down. Mm. It really is. Because when a team goes down, if you're a footballer and it's your career, it's your job, yeah. you would think, okay, right, I need to get back to the Premier League just so I can, A, maybe I'm playing for England or whatever my country is. Like, yeah. It makes sense, right, from a career standpoint. Yeah. But to take a pay cut to stay, and he could have got a move back to the Premier League. Mm, like, I'm like, fair play, respect, I love that. And he was with us for, he was with us for nine years, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was with us for longer than people remember. And, and did he even come back at one point? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Think, what we did, no one else wanted him. I don't know. We can talk about it at another time. I'm not it's interested. Yeah, but, yeah. but, yeah, he, he, he loved the club, and I love him. And he, he's the last player I ever got. The first player I got on the back of my shirt was Joe Cole, 26. Last one I got on the back of my shirt was 24, Cole. Um, and is it as, like, a lot of people deride people who are adults for having numbers of back of shirts? I get it. I think I was... 20 at the time or whatever it was but yeah. but I don't care I just love him he yeah. he he exuded everything everything that was great he would always try and also he's genuinely funny over yeah. steaming snow angels like he's just a good he's just he's just a good guy Carlton Cole is definitely one of them yeah and he's um and his podcast with Marlon and uh Chris Skull um, mm. football yeah. that's that's brilliant love it absolutely and he's, he's a as you said yeah. anyone who follows him on social media yeah. he, he he knows you know he he, he plays you know, he knows that people take the mickey out of him and he plays mm. to it. And, you know, he's made a career out of it and made a lot of money as well. So, you know, why not? And he, but he just, as you said, he seems like a genuinely nice bloke as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so who's going to partner Colt and Cole up front then? This is the questionable one. Okay. okay. But I, I appreciate that there are certain subjects of people who know me who would think if I didn't include this player, I'd be lying to myself. Yeah. Oh, I was genuinely close. That diving <laughs> header he did that one was it time. Oh. Ilian or Nene? Do you remember Nene as well? Yeah, oh, Nene. Nene, he was on my list. Oh, but oh. I, I'll, I'll send you my list after. You can see you've just hit. You've just hit two of them. You just hit two. <laughs> Brilliant. Of them. Um, no, it's Jordan Hugel, um, and he is. He's got a very okay. He's got a very kind face, for a start, which helps. He turns up. No one knows who he is. No one, everyone's like, what, we've just bought this striker from Preston. Preston fans, seemingly on the forum, are like, wait, what? West Ham have bought John Hugo. Yeah. I've spoke, I've got a QPR, I know someone who supports QPR. I spoke mm. to him. He said, he's good, Charlie, but he's not, he's not a Premier League striker. No. I don't, I don't, I don't care. He turns up. He doesn't even get a proper announcement video. It's just him holding a camera, talking about how he just wants to walk out in front of the bubbles. He never walked out in front of the bubbles. I'm starting to think he never will, but I've, I've still got that hope whenever our summer transfer window eventually arrives, maybe, <laughs> that he comes back in at least once. Just gets yeah. to walk. I just, he, <sighs> do I think he could do a job? Yes, I do. Do I think he would try 100%? Yes, I do. Even I remember in his first interview, he said something along the lines of, I will always give 100%. I'm going to try. You, you hear other people talk about him, like other former managers, they're like, oh, he tries really hard. He works mm. really hard. That's all I want. That's all I want. I just, yeah. I just, I understand he's no good. <laughs> I understand most West Ham fans will say he's no good. I get it. 
did he play three appearances and only had like what 22 something like that. I get it I get it but I just I just want it I want it and I know for a fact there are certain people who who would see this who know me um people who watch like American Hammers for example um who would be like Charlie would be lying if he didn't because I've got I've been running a campaign on social media and I say campaign it's just me <laughs> putting the hashtag recall big jords out there <laughs> And no one's involved apart from me. That's fine. I don't mind. Occasionally I get it. But I've got like a little alert set up on my tweet deck. So if anyone ever tweets it, I see it. It's just me. I don't care. Yeah. I will I will not stop until he's back. Recall Big George, Jordan Hugel. He's just he even goes to games. That's the thing I like about him as well. It's genuine. Remember, he goes G- to yeah. games. Yeah, he goes to games. Like Gonzo videos. said that story about yeah. it, like of him just going to the game in his off days, and it's like as a guy who just loves, he, he knows he's probably very lucky to have got to the Premier League. Mm. He's worked his way all the way up from the lower leagues to the top in the same way to Nick Antonio, in the same way of other people. And he probably realises, he's like, do you know what, I was lucky. Five, when he went in his game, his first interview, he said, five years ago, I was working in a bar and now yeah. I'm in the Premier League. And it's like, he knows how lucky he is. Um, and he just, just, get it, just when I walk out in front of the bubbles, that's all I want, right? That's, that's all I've ever wanted. I can listen. I just want it to happen. Yeah. Like, if there's one thing that should come from my life specifically, it's him walking out in front of the world and I'll be happy. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think that, and I, and I actually love that team, Charlie. We got Greeno in goal. We got Rat. I completely forgot about Rat. That's brilliant. Rat. We got Repka, Tompkins, and Collins midfield. We got Diamante, Benayin, Noble, Joe Cole, Colton, and uh, Big George up front. Love it. Absolutely love it. Charlie, it's been brilliant. It's been really nice. Really nice chat. I really appreciate your time and the thought you've got into it as well. Clearly, there's been a lot of thought. There's been a lot of agonising, like a lot of late nights. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit like a X Factor when they put all the who they're going to have in their group. I can imagine that being like, yeah, I've got to think yeah. of this. I've got, like a, I've got a table with a spotlight on it. There's like little Polaroids of all the players. I'm moving them around. I'm shifting exactly. it. I'm trying to think of it. Yeah, there was four players. Is it going to be, be Hugo or is it going to be Guillermo Franco? I just don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. And thank you to everyone for, for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, you know, like, share, subscribe, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Watch all the others and uh, we'll be back soon. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.